Welcome biologists to this session where we're going to look at the organisation of the mammalian nervous system. So the nervous system is split into the central nervous system and the peripheral nervous system. Then the peripheral nervous system is split into the somatic and autonomic. Then the autonomic, autonomic nervous system is split into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic. And there are certain characteristics of each of these nervous systems that we need to be aware of. So anything in a red box is taken directly from the MART scheme. So here I've got the central nervous system, which consists of the brain and the spine. This consists of the relay neurons and it has loads of synapses. Whereas the peripheral nervous system includes the somatic and autonomic nervous systems. The nerves go from the sense organs to glands. They contain sensory and motor neurons and they detect stimuli and control effectors. Then the peripheral nervous system is then split into the som somatic and the autonomic nervous system. So the somatic nervous system is your conscious control, for example, where you think about moving your arm or your leg, or you think about smiling or something like that. The autonomic nervous system, this is working constantly. It's your subconscious control, such as, for example, your heartbeat. This, um, this autonomic the nervous system is then split into your sympathetic and your parasympathetic nervous system. And we have a bit of a new terminology here that's going to pop up. So a ganglion, which is a structure containing a number of nerve bodies, typically linked into synapses and often forming swellings in a nerve fibre. So the sympathetic nervous system, this is your fight and flight response. So this is where you have the neurotransmitter being noradrenaline. It has the short preganglionic, so that's what a ganglion is, and long postganglionic neurons. It increases the breathing rate to increase the intake of oxygen. It increases the diameter of your airways to increase the volume of oxygen you're breathing in. It increases the blood flow to your skeletal muscles to allow as much oxygen as possible to reach those muscle fibers for aerobic respiration. It's also involved in orgasm. It dilates pupils. It causes a liver to release glucose, so I've got more glucose available to my blood to be taken to muscles for aerobic respiration. And it also reduces peristalsis, which is the muscle contraction within the gut. Parasympathetic is uh, opposite almost. So this is involved, this is involves the uh, acetylcholine neurotransmitter. It's got long preganglionic and short post. It's involved in the rest and digest. It decreases the breath rate. It decreases the diameter of the airways. It decreases the blood flow to skeletal muscles, constricts pupils, and causes the liver to store glucose as glycogen. And it also increases peristalsis. Here's a nice diagram just to show you um, some of those key points. I'm not going to read through that, but if you want to pause the video and have a look, there's some good key points on there if you're more of a visual learner. And those are the main points that you need to know there on the organisation of the mammalian nervous system. Please like and share the video. Guys, good luck in your exams and remember to not use the words it, they, amount and size. Use better, more scientific, more biological terminology. Good luck with your exams.